Nigel D'Souza is an analyst at Veritas Investment Research. You had a buy rating on home capital. I assume it wasn't for this reason. But when you took a look at the offer on the table, not conditional to financing, just you know, customary closing things, what was your initial reaction? Well, I thought it was a fair offer to start with, right? So when we look at the valuation of home capital, at $25, $20 per share, on a forward earnings basis, it's trading somewhere between four to five times forward earnings. Now, on a valuation basis, that's actually um, in line with where home capital share prices have bottomed in past cycles, mm -hmm. both during the global financial crisis, around four and a half times earnings, and during the COVID pandemic sell-off in 2020 at around four and a half times earnings. So the current share price is deeply discounted. The valuation uh, that's currently on the table, about $44 per share, that's about a seven times forward earnings multiple for home capital. That's still below the historical average P multiple for home cap, which is around eight and a half times. So I think the offer is fair at $44 per share. I think the shareholders should uh, accept it and approve it. Uh, now, the, the issue is, well, is home capital actually worth that much? Well, the only way for it to be worth the current share price, which is below $30 per share, is what I would outline as a worst case scenario. So that would be a scenario where- So you're saying it was already trading at a worst case scenario? Yes, close to worst case scenario valuation. If you assume seven times forward earnings as a fair multiple, uh, that type of scenario would entail both the mortgage book declining by low single digits quarterly, as well as credit losses for home capital being substantially greater than the losses home capital incurred during the financial crisis, somewhere wow. in the magna magnitude of order three to four times greater. So the valuation was severely depressed. I think it was driven by sentiment uh, and concerns of a potential recession on the horizon in 2023, as well as concerns of the impact of rising rates on the broader real estate market. But unless you expected the tail risk or the worst case scenario to play out, our view was that home capital is worth a lot more. So a lot of people, you know, and I would say looking at Equitable and others that are trading up, uh, perhaps saying, well, maybe here's somebody who knows the space very well is calling a bottom, and then maybe it won't get much worse from here. But if I'm listening to what you're saying, it perhaps is just taking advantage of a very depressed stock price if you are long-term bullish on the space. Yeah, that's right. I think you need to separate the outlook for the overall economy or the sector versus company specific factors, right? When you look at home capital, you really have to view it on its individual fundamentals and on company specific factors and dynamics. On that metric, home capital was substantially undervalued. At trading below five times earnings, four times earnings, that's an incredibly cheap valuation. You really would have to expect something horrible to happen for it to be worth uh, its current share price. Do you expect another bidder? I think you can make an argument that it could be worth more than $44 per share, but that would be in a scenario marked by a mild recession in Canada and a scenario where interest rates start declining fairly meaningfully sometime next year. In that in, in scenario outcome, it could be worth materially more than $44 per share, but I don't think a bidder is going to come out given the current uncertainty in the macroeconomic outlook and be comfortable paying more than $44. Now, you have somebody who already owns the rival, um, you know, buying out home capital. This, I don't know what the, the strategic plans are in terms of a combination, and certainly it doesn't look like that is what is being suggested here, but it is, um, you could call it consolidation in the space under one person. If you are one of the big banks, how are you watching the alternative mortgage lending space evolve? Um, does the fact that it seems like it's coming together pose a little bit more of a competitive threat? How should we think about that? Well, I think it's important to remember that these are completely separate end customers. The banks, the larger banks in Canada, play in the prime space. Mm -hmm. Home capital and other alternative lenders play in the near prime space. So these aren't customers that both entities are competing from, both the larger banks and the alternative lenders. They're separate subsets. Now, the dynamic typically is that individuals who have blemished credit scores or have difficulty being approved of a prime lender will go to a bank like Home Capital, take out a short-term mortgage, typically a year to two years max in terms of the term, build up their credit score, build some equity in their house, and then graduate to the prime space because they have that credit score build up and they have higher equity in their, in their home. So Home Capital is more so a stepping stone for a lot of individuals in Canada to move into the prime lending space. So a larger bank is not gonna view consolidation in that space uh, as a threat. It's in fact a symbiotic relationship, I would say, where 
access to near prime banking allows people to graduate uh, and facilitates graduation into the prime space where the banks dominate. You are not somebody who is uh, perennially bearish or perennially bullish uh, on the sector. And in fact, you've, you've got some sales, you've got some buys in the Canadian banking sector. As we move to earnings season in the Canadian bank stocks, uh, how much do you expect housing to feature prominently and what we're going to hear from these banks? Well, I think housing is always online in Canada. Mm -hmm. So I think it will be important in terms of the banks have substantial exposure to mortgage lending. But in terms of the actual impact to the bottom line, I don't think residential mortgages are going to be in focus uh, in the near term. I think what matters more is what happens in other types of credit, like commercial lending or credit cards or unsecured consumer loans. That's where we might see risk starting to form. It's still way too early, uh, but I don't think the residential or real estate market outlook just yet is something that's going to be incredibly important. I think that's a bigger story next year when these interest rates actually start to be reflected in monthly mortgage payments moving up when individuals renew or when they hit their trigger rate on variable mortgages.